QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month Number 2 Reports. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop, get great guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process. We do every time maximize the home page in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, profit and loss, the good old P and L changing the range for the first two months, 0101 23 to 0228 23. Let's also break that down to a month by month comparison, hitting the total, bringing that to the months, customizing it, fonts and numbers, changing the font, bringing it up to 14. Okay, yes, okay. Reports drop down, company and financial this time, the balance sheet. Customize it from 010123 to 022823. Let's break that out to the month by month comparison to fonts, numbers, changing them to 14. Okay, yes, okay. There's the setup process we go through every time we're finalizing, completing, wrapping up the month two bank reconciliation. This being the bank balance as of the end of February. If I go to the banking drop down, we go to the reconcile. We entered our data here, checking account 228.23. There's the beginning balance. There's the ending balance. Let's continue. In prior presentations, we then uh, matched this out to the bank statements. This is the reconciling process. So if I look at the bank statement, we have summarized in essence our summary up top. There's the 61,241 that matches here. That's our beginning balance. We got the 51,981,20, which is represented there. We then have the 11,633, which is represented here. So I'm going to make that green. And that means our cleared balance uh, must match out. It must work. That's the 101,590,05. That then is represented here. So there's the 101,590,05. That's what's on the bank statement as of the cutoff date. That, however, is not our ending balance on the books, which we saw is on the balance sheet at 95,259,07. The difference between the two back to the reconciliation represented by those items that we entered into the system but did not check off those are going to be the reconciling items known as outstanding checks and outstanding deposits so now we're going to create the reconciliation report and just take a look at that report note if this is not zero then you don't really want to go forward you want to make it zero and if your beginning balance is matching out then you should be able to take and tie everything off and get that to zero. It has to work if there's something on the bank statement that's different than what's on your book. Determine if the bank statement is wrong, which isn't normally the case. And if it's right, then you got to fix your books. And if you do that, then you should be able to get in balance here. You could force it to work, meaning if it wasn't in balance and you said reconcile, you could say enter the adjustment, forcing it to reconcile. But if, for example, I was looking at a QuickBooks account that that forced reconciliations, my confidence level in the accuracy of those books goes way down. <laughs> so it's a huge internal control to to do the reconciliations. OK, that said, let's unclick that. Let's get back down to zero. Let's reconcile. Note also, as you reconcile, you might have uh, less of an ability to get access to the prior bank reconciliation that you did in our case in January because the reconciliations are unlike other reports 
in that they're not being created as we enter data. You can't really change them after you change data and therefore they're more like a, a static type of report. So you want to print out the reports once you make them. So I'm gonna say we have the same options we saw in month one, summary, detail, or both. If you're gonna pick one or the other, pick the detail. Even though it's overwhelming with too much detail, it has what you need. The summary does not because it does not expand on outstanding checks and deposits. Let's take a look at them. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now, when you first open it up, the report looks like other reports in its formatting. When you go back into it after closing it from before, then it might look more like a PDF file. So it's a little bit strange in that way as well. Let's first look about the summary report. I'll customize it, fonting, numbering it, and change the font. Let's bring it on up to 14. Let's say 14 is good enough. Okay. Yes. Boom. Bam. Let's go ahead and uh, unexpand them or collapse them. Unexpand or collapse. So we've got the clear transaction. That, that just represents the items that are mirroring what's on the bank statement. So the 61,241, the 11,633, the 51,981, and the 40,380, 348,20 then should match bank statement activity. 61,241, 51,981, 11,633, 101,590,005. 5. So there it is. Now that isn't really necessary because we already have the bank statement that's just kind of telling us what we checked off which should match what's on the bank statement which means our cleared balance should match the bank balance that in essence is our bank balance in other words this is where the bank rec really kind of starts in my opinion you've got that number and then the uncleared items which represent the outstanding checks and deposits giving us the exact difference the reconciling amounts to then get to the register balance at 95,259,07, that amount matching what's on the balance sheet. 95,259,07. That's why it's a reconciliation, people. That's it. And then, so that's the bank reconciliation from here to here. However, it doesn't give us the detail on the checks. It doesn't give us the detail on the deposit. So I can't really check the month after February and March, for example, to see if those items have cleared the bank because I don't have the details. So if you give this report, say to an auditor or something like that, you might say, well, the auditor wants uh, a bank rec. You give them the summary. They're not gonna like it. They're gonna say, it's not enough. I don't have the detail. You just told me the seven items. How do I know you didn't make that up? Uh, how do I know that those are legitimate items? How can I double check on those items? So although the summary reconciliation is nice to look at for ease of looking at it, it doesn't have the detail. Now we don't have the transactions afterward this time because we only enter transactions for two months, but it also enters or would have if we had transactions in March added detail, which in my opinion, generally unnecessary. Then we can go to the, to the other reconciliation, the detail, and let's customize it too and bring it on up to 14 as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it's got the same stuff, but as you might expect, it has more detail in it with the, de the detail report <clears throat> includes details. So now we've got the cleared balance, which has all the cleared stuff, which once again, just matches what's on the bank statement because we checked all that stuff off. So it's somewhat redundant. What we're really looking for is there's the start of the bank sec reconciliation. That's the bank balance in essence, 101.590.05 the 101.95.05. And then we've got the uncleared stuff, which represents uh, the, the check forms, the decreases, which now labels each of those items. So now this is what I want because now I can kind of compare this to, to uh, whether they cleared in March. That's what I need to know. If I was an auditor, I would want to know exactly what these checks are and verify them to make sure that, you know, you, we didn't make up those checks and whatnot. And then we got the two deposits and that's the difference that reconciles us from the bank balance to the book balance. Now, just a quick look. Notice that if we compare the prior bank statement, we, we, we of course have a nice rollover of the ending balance of January being the beginning balance of February and then everything cleared out on both January and February. If we take a look at the prior month reconciliation, 
we would expect then the uncleared items, which are gonna be these checks, the ones that we didn't check off that were written in January, but didn't clear the bank in January, to then clear in February. So if I if I look at that, five, that 108, the 110, the 115, and I go into the, the February bank rec and the cleared items, we've got the the items that were in January. Here's the here's one that was written in January that cleared in February. This was written in January, cleared in February. Remember that these dates that we entered them into the system will differ than what's on the book. So this 1014, for example, will differ than what's on the bank statement is the 1014. It cleared in February. Uh, even though we wrote it in January. I think I got that a little backwards. Sorry about that. We wrote it here in January. It cleared in February as we are looking at the February bank reconciliation. So that's how those two things are kind of connected up. It can be a little bit confusing to think about how that, how that works because we've got the cleared balance that cleared last time that the system knows that's included in our beginning balance and then when we do the future bank reconciliations, for example, when I do the bank reconciliation for uh, March next month, we're going to have the cleared balance, which which is represented by this number and everything that we checked off in QuickBooks. This is the bank statement, which is also on QuickBooks representing the cleared balance. The system knows that because we checked them off, even though that's different than, of course, what's on the uh, the actual books here on the balance sheet, 95 to 5907 as of February. Okay, so that's the detail report. Also note that uh, you're gonna wa want to be printing these items out because these reports will, will not be the same kind of reports. In other words, if I go to the reports drop down into the banking, you can see down here it says previous reconciliation. And that would give an indication that you might have some trouble going back to the reconciliation five months ago. And part of that is because the reconciliations uh, in QuickBooks are going to, you know, they're going to be based on the work that you did to reconcile, not just the data input work. They're not being built just by your data input, but by the process of reconciling. And if you deleted something that you had reconciled before or was on the bank reconciliation, then QuickBooks doesn't really have a way to account for that or adjust the reconciliation. So you wanna have a static report printed out so that if something gets messed up, you can then compare what you had reconciled before to whatever had been deleted or whatever in the future. So I'm gonna print this out. I'm gonna print it and say file, save as a PDF. I also wanna just show you that if I close this and go back into it, that it might open like a PDF type of format. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna say that this is gonna go into my QuickBooks desktop and I'm gonna just call it, uh, let's just put it right here. This'll be, this'll be uh, bank rec in February. So this is the bank rec for February. I'll say save it. So we have that. Now uh, note that when you open it up, like when you save this one, uh, let me just show you that I, that I noticed something I noticed that when you save these, sometimes it'll open it up kind of uh, uh, not in an ideal fashion. You can see it's going the wrong way. Bank February. Uh, so this one looks right. This one actually opened up vertically or in a portrait format. But if I open this one up, I think it's because I had expanded it. It, it made it landscape and then it oriented it this way. So if you want to change that orientation to, to kind of turn it around, one way to do that, one way to see it that way is you can you can file and I'm going to say I'm going to open it up. I want to open it in like a browser window. And so now you're going to open it up this way and then you have the capacity to rotate it. So you can you can rotate your reports just just to note that idea or that option. Then uh, I'm gonna close this back out. I'm gonna close this out. I'm going to then close this one. And then if I go into the reports again and try to open them back up, accounting, let's go to the banking previous reconciliation just to show what it looks like here. I'll look at the detail report and display. Then notice it doesn't show up in the same format. It, it opens what looks kind of more like a PDF file within QuickBooks. So if it if you're, report looks like that don't be surprised about that because again 
the reports for the bank wrecks are a little bit wonky, a little bit different than the other reports due to the nature of them. So I also just want to check the register while we're here. We're gonna go to the banking use register and I'll open up the checking register. Notice these items that are checked off now are represented that they're cleared. Before they were cleared, they were little asterisks when we had them checked off, but we haven't finalized the reconciliation. Now they're checked off as cleared. If you're gonna delete anything, any prior period transaction, and it was, you know, you gotta be careful about what's gonna happen with your reconciliations and whatnot in future periods. So if there are uncleared checks and you need to avoid them in the future, or something like that or then you want to be again careful about how you're going to do that so you don't mess up prior period transactions all right so that's the general idea those are the bank reconciliations let's just open up the trial balance to see where we stand at this point in time we made a couple adjustments during our process here uh with the withdrawals i believe and the bank service charges so let's run this from 010123 to 123123 this is where we stand i'll customize it with the fonting and the numbering bringing the font up to let's say 16 this time okay yes and okay this is where we stand these are the two legs of the debit and credit that we're standing on and you can check them out and see if your legs match these legs and if they do great uh, if not then try to change the dates it's often a date range issue